Dear friends, welcome back to Automate with Rakesh. In this video, we are going to learn about join data tables. Let me show you one of the question which we will try to solve in this video. The question is, you are working on a UiPath automation project where you have two data tables. One is employee DT and the other one is department DT. Let's have a close look of the employee DT. The employee DT has got ID, name, department ID and salary. And the department ID has got the IDs and the department name. For example, here a uh, name of a uh, employee is A and the department ID is 101. That means he is from IT department, right? C, employee C, 102 means he is from HR. 103 means he's from finance. So like that, there are two different tables. Your task is to perform a join operation using link on these data tables based on the department ID column. So department ID column is your key. Based on this primary key or the department ID key, you will be joining both the data tables. Okay. Based on the department ID column and the create a new data table named output DT. So the output DT contains what? ID, name, department ID and salary, everything from the employee DT and only one column from the department DT which is department names. So now this is a complete table. Everybody can understand where which department this employee is from. So how to achieve this? Let's see on UAPA Studio. Let's move on. On my UiPath Studio, the very first requirement is to build a simple table on your Excel file. So on my sheet 5, I have my employee data table. And on the sheet 6, I have my department data table. Going back to UiPath Studio, here in the Excel process scope, I have used two different read range activities. One is reading from the sheet number 5 which is our employee DT and I'm storing that to a variable called employee DT. And I'm reading the sheet number six and storing that to a variable called department DT. Pretty simple. All right, let's minimize it. Now we have to get an output in output DT. So here I have created a variable called output DT and I have initialized it. New data table. You can write new system dot data dot data table or new data table. You can write the namespace or you can skip that. So here you can see I have initialized it. Fine. After this, we need the output in certain format. We saw that combination of both of it. So the very first activity, what we will do, we will use build data table. What is the activity name? Build data table. In this data table, we have to store the output DT, the format of output, output DT we will First, we have to create the format. Click on data table. So what are the columns your output DT will have? Remember before we proceed, remember all the column names. It's quite simple to remember ID, name, department ID and salary from the employee data. And from, from the department DT, we have department ID and department name. So the final output should contain all this one, two, three, four column. And from the sheet six, it should contain the department name. So total five columns. Let's go back to the studio and start designing the interface of the output DT. For that, let me remove everything and start changing the names. So the very first one from employee DT is ID. Click OK. The second one we have is name. Ensure you are changing this value to string. OK. Then we have our uh, DPT ID department ID which is a string okay I'll keep everything as string to keep it simple and then next is salary okay and the next column that we need is department DPT name okay so now we have created a structure click on okay and ensure ensure this build data table you are creating this variable output DT you have to put this output DT variable so now what happened this output DT has got a structure this is required 
once this structure is created let's create the link query for that let me have a assign activity and the assign activity this side i will write output dt and this side we will write the link query so let me click on this okay now here you have to focus it is pretty simple once you have get an understanding you will be able to do it on your own first right now focus what are the important points i am going to cover the very first thing you take the name of your first data table which is your employee data table okay hit enter and remember to write as enumerable you are converting the data table to data rows and then as you are using any method you will use this method dot join clear and parenthesis now the very first question i will ask you okay you have written this now with which data table are you going to join employee data table is one what is your second data table you mention it within the parenthesis clear pretty simple now what is our second data table name department dt okay the name of the second variable which is department dt now after okay you have written employee data table and you have written the second data table dot join second data table understood based on what condition so the con condition is department id let me save this so the, what is the condition so the condition is both this table has got a common column called department id which has some values and here also we have a department id which has some values and there are meaning of it so department id is the column which is common in both the tables so that is your condition based on which you would like to join now let's go back to yapa studio and here let's continue the condition so here i will put a comma okay after that you have to write your condition so hit enter because you have to write so many things here i'm hitting enter and trying to come here now here how will you access the department id which is there in your employee database data table i want to access the department id now for that you will write the lambda function so you are all already inside the parenthesis of join okay remember that so here i am writing the lambda function and here you, instead of writing xy let's write some proper variables so first is employee dt so i will see say employee the lambda function i am saying emp and then i wanted to target the department id of employee table so i will write dpt id dot to string done put a comma after this put a comma hit enter okay now with this i have to compare i have to match that with department id department in the second data table i have to match so the second data table i'll create one more lambda function and name it as db you can put x and y but again that is not very professional so let's write something so i'm writing dep that is representing a second data table this data table the first one representing the first data table i got the department id and same way i'm mentioning for the second data table the lambda function i've created as dep so using the name of that dep i'll simply say dept id dot to string so let's say in your second data table instead of dept id it could be department id the full spelling could be there so you can define it here whatever the exact name is you can write it here okay so now what is happening it is it is going to join employee data table with which data table department data table based on what condition based on department id of employee table and department id of department table based on that you do a join function after that put a comma now when it is joining when it joins what happens it creates there are two different data tables actually right and at the end you need four columns from the employee table and one column from the department table right so for that we have to create a new object which is going to hold the columns of employee data table what we need and the columns of department table what we need so for that i'll create one more lambda function called function and i'm going to use these two functions here emp and dep okay em so that emp represents the first data table 
comma DEP represent my second data table. So this is my function. Now using this function employee DP, I'll create a new object which is going to hold my joined data table. Okay, so I'll say new object and this parenthesis is important. And how you create an object, give a space and curly braces. So inside that we can define what are the column I need from employee and what are the columns I need from department table. So this is a new lambda function which is holding two different variables. EMP representing the first data table, DEP representing the second data table. So first, second, third, it is just understanding which are the two data tables and which is the column on which I will apply the join. After that, you are actually writing, okay, after you apply that, you give me these are the columns I need from employee data table and few columns I need from department column. So for that, this fourth line is written. Making sense? Function, employee department, new object and curly braces. Now hit enter here. I'll show you. After I write few things here, it will be pretty clear to you. Okay. So the very first thing I will write within the curly braces I'm writing. Okay. First you give me from employee, you give me the ID column. Dot to string. Okay. Then I need, we'll just copy paste this. Okay. Several times. So whatever the columns you need as in your output, you can mention it here. And the second thing I need is the name column. Put a comma. And the third thing from employee table I need is the department ID column. Okay. And the fourth thing I need is from the employee table. What is that? I need the salary. Simple, put a comma. And then from department, this one, I need DEP, right? DEP represents, so DEP. And here I need which column? DEPT name I need. Dot to string. Okay. And the at the end one, you don't put a comma because that's the last one. So whatever the columns you need, you write it here. You need two columns, you need four columns, whatever it, you write within this object. Okay, so this object, getting it, this particular object is now containing what are the columns you need as an output. So that is stored in the new object. Okay, and remember one mistake people would do while you are defining the second data table, that also you have to convert as, as, as innumerable. Okay, remember this. It's very important. All the data tables has to be converted to as innumerable. So here also I have to convert it to as innumerable. Done. So once this is done, then I will use a select method. And then within the select method, I'll create a function called x, the lambda function. So this x now tell me, this x is going to hold what? This new object. So it's going to, so the final method, what you are writing, that would be the output, your query output, right? So this is the query output is all this data rows are there. So what I'm doing, I'm now holding this object this entire object with by writing a lambda function dot select lambda function means I'm holding the last output here. After holding this, what I will do, I'll write my output DT dot rows dot add. And I'm going to add this newly created object inside this output DT, which is currently blank and has some structure. It just has a structure, the columns it has, but again, there's no values inside this. So this X, whatever the join function is going to get into this new object, that carried to the X object, and this X object is going to add it to the output DT. Pretty simple. Now let us hit on save. Okay. And let's see the output. So let's see, so there are some error. Um, okay. One small thing we can do is after doing this, copy to data table, right? dot copy to data table clear and save it so this is your final expression i'm going to copy this to my notepad so that i can pass it in the video description or join function okay now we have got this entire code let me save and let us run it so once, so I'm run, I'm writing in this one, I'm writing to sheet number seven. Okay. 
excel process code when i'm using a right range activity okay so it has completed let's go here and if you look at the sheet number seven it has got id name department id salary department name okay now sometimes looking at this what what is the thing that comes to my mind it will be better if i have this department name beside department id instead of in the e column let it be there in the d column and the salary be there in the e column i want to swipe so how will i do it let's go back to the studio open the code and here what we will do we'll simply keep this on the top put a comma and remove this comma here okay done now let me save this code let's see this is how the output had come now i am going to run this code okay so the code has run if i go back sheet number seven department id okay it did not change let me delete save let me check the code once again did i save it okay department name from dep employee salary save it save it and run this okay i'll tell you another what is the mistake happening here is see what is happening here it has come but the column had not changed because of the structure of our build data table so here what we will do this one here we have written salary right the structure also we need to change correct so i will say dept name the output is coming but the structure we didn't change okay so first we need to remove this and this one i will name it as dept name okay and then we will add one more column called salary salary will keep it at the end salary let's say some sometimes you might want the salary to be in integer format okay so i'll put integer salary integer and ensure in your code also you are changing it here also you are adding that right format convert to integer okay so all the changes we have done is it fine the structure of the output data table we have changed and also this one we have changed and we have made it to integer and the same thing we have made the changes now if i run this again now let me delete everything it will anyways it should override let me save and run it okay so the execution is complete now if i go back you can see this came in the integer format and all these things department id like this you can play whatever the columns you need let's say you don't need something you can simply remove that for example let's say i don't need the um, uh, name okay i don't need the id for example just the department i don't need the id so anything you don't need you simply remove that and save it and ensure you have also removed this made the structure here properly okay both should match click on okay and let me let us erase this delete save in the sheet number seven and let me run it again so all kind of modification that you want you can achieve it all right so the execution is complete now if i go back you can see i got id name the department id is no more there i got department name and salary all right so i hope you have learned a lot of things in this video if this video was helpful and you have learned something new please ensure you are liking our videos and supporting my channel thank you guys for all the support till now we are going to meet once again in our next content till then take care